Welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how we make these casings for doorways. You could use these for cased openings that are, have no door, or you can actually put these or remove your existing door trim and install these in units. And what we're doing today is a cased opening without a door, and we're going to show you that process on how we do it. But this is all one piece. I can now take this in and install it as such, and it makes it a whole lot easier than doing it stacking piece upon piece. So we'll take you all in and show you how we got to this point. So what I'm gonna be using today is this Craig pocket hole jig right there. The table saw eight and a quarter, testing out the seven and a quarter Milwaukee. So that's kind of like a little setup here. And these are real close together, but I'm not gonna be ripping anything big. So that's fine right there. And then the 12 inch DeWalt over here with about half of the easy speedy fence, just cause we're not doing any long runs. And then it's gonna be the DeWalt arsenal over here and the materials in the garage right here. So I'll take you all inside and show you what we got. So before I get started here, I'm just gonna check if these two sides are uh, plumb, and then I'm gonna make sure that this is level up here, this header. And you can see right there, we're within tolerance on our left side. And it looks like we're good here too. And then we'll check, now that we know that we're plumb on both sides, then we'll check if we're level up here. Yeah, whoever framed this door, we did a really good job. I don't know if you can see that from there, but that header is really level as well. Since I have these outside drywall corner beads that are rounded and I can't really take a measurement there and see it because it's hard to get an accurate measurement. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take two pieces of scrap, nail them on each side, and then I'll be able to get a measurement and then I'll just move them and get an average to make sure when I rip this middle board down for the inside of the door jam, that it's at least a little proud of the outside edges. We don't never want it to be skinny because if it's skinny, then your casing is gonna like fold in and it's just really bad. All these are our one by four pieces of pine. These are actually gonna be our casings. These are gonna go on here with a inside jam board like that with the 3 16 reveal. So this is essentially what we're doing. Since these are rounded, I can't just I can't just hook it on there because I've got some leftover area exposed here and then I can't really, even if I close one eye and try to look at this, I can't really see where that is. So to eliminate that problem, what I'm going to do is take these boards like this and put them just like that, tack them in there with an 18 gauge nail and then get a reading and that will eliminate that problem. And now that I can see exactly where that wall's coming off, I can just measure from board to board. And let's see, we got four and seven eighths down here and four and seven eighths down here. Now I don't wanna just take this, take this and then just start cutting now. I wanna get kind of a median average of different areas of this. So I'll pull this out, bend this nail back and forth, and then I can continue to use these. Instead of just going with the four and seven eighths exactly, I'm gonna go with four and 15 sixteenths just to really make sure that it's just slightly proud. So I'm gonna go to the table saw, rip of one of my one by sixes down to four and 15 sixteenths, and then we'll get started on putting this thing together. So we got that one by six ripped down to four and 15 16. Now what I'm going to do is install this header jam first. And I'm simply just going to use my tape measure, measure from inside corner to inside corner. It's about 49 and one eighth. We're just going to do 49 plus. That way we're not jamming this thing in there. 
And I'm gonna install that header first and then the legs will go up under there to support it. I'm gonna install this using a 15 gauge nail straight into that header um, two by four that's in there and that will be good and strong and that won't come out. Okay, so I got our header piece ripped and we're gonna just install this. I'm gonna make sure it fits nice and snug first and that it's not too much to jam in there. So that fits really good. You don't wanna just be like jamming it in there. Uh, if you do, that I would probably just take it out and take a blade off of it. But you also don't want a lot of play. So this right here should be perfect. I'm gonna use those same scrap pieces with the 18 gauge nail to help me better install this. And I'm gonna do this on one side only now. So I'll show you what I mean. I'm gonna put this board tacked in here. And I'm gonna put this board tacked in here. And now I have a stop to install this on. And it was like this. So now I can put this in here and, and just lightly push it up against that stop. And you wanna inspect it to make sure the drywall's not coming over on this side, like creeping over, because then you'll have a, another problem. If that does happen, you can, it's just like in certain areas, you don't want that to happen over the whole thing, but you can take a mini sledge or a mini hammer and just kind of beat that drywall where it is, because working in this environment, nothing's ever perfect. So you've got to kind of work with it to make it perfect. So now that I have those stops there, I can feel and inspect here that I'm good to go. What I'm gonna do is take that 15 gauge nail and then put a few shots in here. I'm not using any adhesive up here. There's no reason to. I'm going straight from the pine into the stud. So I'm gonna shoot those at angles and I didn't have my glasses on for the 18 gauge. Probably should, but definitely for this one I am. Oh, better turn it on. These are two and a half inch 15 gauge nails. And these are exactly what this is made for. And that's just at an angle. So we've got six nails. I'm gonna put another two right here. So that thing's not going anywhere. And now what I should have, take these glasses off, is a good reveal on both sides. So you can see I'm flush with the drywall and the header jam that I just installed. And also on this side is the same way. So when I put my casings on, I'm gonna be good to go the whole way. So that bull nose came off with that because they lock nailed it. And then this one, it's a little tricky because it's under there. But that should be it. Now that's good enough for me to install my board on now. So I'll get that, that uh, leg on, the jam leg on this side, and then I'm gonna remove the baseboard on the other side as well, same exact process. Dude, <laughs> this guy put one nail. It's all right. I think I actually did this five years ago. No. <laughs> Fresh start. So now I'm gonna measure from the tile all the way up to my header on that header jam up there and we'll see what we come up with there. So now that we have those baseboards removed, I'm just gonna put my tape on the tile, bring it up to here. So, and so I don't have to bend the tape in the corner. So I'm gonna set the tape on the tile just so I don't have to bend it up in the corner like this. That's fine, you can read a tape measure like that. But just to get a little bit more accurate, I'll take it to the side and get it right on the side. And I'm coming up as 81 minus. Whenever I say minus, that's just a 16th lower than 81. That's something that we say just so we don't have to say 15 16 all the time. Same thing. So we are good to go on that. 
So I'm going to cut both of those at 81 minus and I'll use my stop method again with my sample pieces and we'll install these two um, jam legs and then we'll be ready to start with the, the actual trim work of the casing. And I'll be able to slide this in and make sure that it's good to go. So. I'm happy with that. I'm just gonna take a little bit of this type on, put it on there. And then I'll slide this up under there. So before I actually shoot this, I grabbed a square. I'm just gonna check if it's good. And that looks perfect. So I'm gonna shoot this while putting pressure, pushing up pressure from the floor up to this joint. Going up against my stop block. Looking good right here. Now we, uh, we take our lunch break. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, what I'm gonna do now is just to better clamp those that header jam into the leg, I'm gonna take an 18 gauge nail and drive it into there. And what I'm gonna do is put the tip of my nail gun right in there and drive that nail from the header jam into the leg jam. And that's just gonna make sure that it's grabbing that glue super tight. I'm gonna do that on all four corners that I have access to. This is a multi-mark from Craig, has a 13 16 reveal guide on it. So I'm gonna put this up in the corner. And, and we'll do this all the way down to So this will go all the way against the edge there. And then there'll be a slight reveal on the casing, on this plinth block on each side of it from the casing. So it'll be like this now. So I'm gonna cut right on that laser line and it should be perfectly plumb. Make sure it's good with our laser. Make sure we're flush on the base side and up against this strip over here. And we're just gonna shoot it into that stud right there. You can see I got this laser running across and I'm gonna cut some boards that are a little bit longer than what this laser line is and then bring them in and mark them to that laser line to make sure that this thing is level. And the reveal is good all the way across where I marked it with that multi-mark. So we should be good to go. And make sure I'm good to go at the bottom too, that it's not gapped. And at this point I'll hold it on that reveal line and just make a line right there. And then I'll make one right here too. Same thing with the other side. Perfect. So on this one, I'll write an R. On the other one, I don't really have to write anything. As long as this is the R, that's going to be the, the L. And that's just right and left. So I'll cut these down to size real quick and then we're gonna run a chamfer, just like we did on the, on the plinth block, but we're gonna stop it two inches from the top up here, and we're gonna stop it four inches from the bottom. It's just a little thing that I like to do, kind of a style I developed that I've seen other people do as well. It's not like I invented it, but I really like doing that. We got the block, the casing with the four inch uh, of plain casing until the chamfer 
comes into play and then it stops two inches from from the uh, top where the header is going to sit on top of it. And I'm going to hold this in position, make a mark over here where this goes, and I'm not going to install this yet. So I know that that is the end of the casing right there. Same thing over here. I'm going to put it where it goes on its reveals, hold it in position. Let's make sure that's straight. And then probably about right there. And then I'll mark over here. And now I know the, the length of the header because the header is going to be the exact dimensions of that. So we'll say 55 and a quarter. We'll do 55 and a quarter. Make sure it's good over here. Yep. So I'll come back with uh, the header. Well, actually, no, next time you see me in this room, I'm going to have these casings legs pocket hold into that header at 55 and, at 55 and a quarter. So I'm going to go do that right now. So we got this thing all screwed up. <laughs> And uh, we'll be able to put this in position like this and do some uh, micro adjusting. But you can see the one by six that I'm using as a header, the laser runs right along the bottom of it. So we know this is completely level and we know we have the proper reveal all right here. But I'm not gonna install this just yet because I'm gonna actually trim it out and install the trim on it. I'm going to run a panel molding on it and then a small 3 and 5 8 crown molding and then that will be completed for this this side at least. And uh, one thing I did outside was you can see we did a mitered return on these edges just to make them so we don't have to worry about the end grain and uh, that's always a good idea if you can do that. If it's, if it's paint grade, you could put plastic wood in there like we're gonna do on the plinth blocks, but I just decided to do this. But I could sand this down, put plastic wood in it, and get the same result with paint grade. If it's stain grade, you're definitely gonna want to do the mitered return. There's the panel molding that's gonna go at the base of the header. And I went ahead and put some 5 8 nails in my 18 gauge. You can see those small nails, so they're not gonna blow through the back when I install this right now. I'm gonna install this right where it is. Put some glue on the back of it. Just a small bead of glue to help it hold over time. And you always wanna dry fit this first before you glue it just to make sure. So hopefully mine fits. Yes, it's good to go. So I'm going to hold this in position and work from one way, from one side to another, and just shooting into this panel molding. show you how this looks now in position if I can get it in position scoot it over more this way right there so we got our laser looking good at the bottom of our panel molding that's still checking out good and we just got to add a crown to this we're gonna use a small 3 and 5 8 crown to cap it and we're not going to put a top on it so we're going to have the crown up there no shelf top on the crown because i like the look of it without the shelf top the only time we put the shelf top on the crown is if it's seen from upstairs so with this low ceiling no upstairs nobody's ever going to see that we're going to forget the shelf top and it'll be just like 
basically like kitchen cabinets. You have the crown with no top. So that's the last part. And then we're good to go on installing this one. So I went ahead and got that little crown molding. This is a three and five eighths crown. I see a glued the corners on, so I don't have to worry about any pin nails or anything like that. And I also brought with me a scrap one by four. What we like to do, since these casings are one by four, we like to have that same reveal on the header. So we'll have this going all the way across as a spacer and we can nail our crown into there. So at this point, I'm actually gonna take this down and lay it on the drop cloths right here. See if I can kind of spread these out a little bit more. And I still have those 5 8 nails in the uh, nail gun here. And those are gonna just be to get it in position so we can have this installed all in one piece. But I will come back with a two inch nail and shoot into a more meatier part of the profile of the crown. Draw a line with this block spacer to know where I can put that glue. And then again, dry fit this first to make sure that you are good to go. And I'll scoot this out a little bit more for that glue. So we'll dry fit this. Oh yeah, that's snug. Oh yeah, that's really snug. Just a small bead. The crown has that flat, that flat back. So it will grab all that glue. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna keep pressure on this towards the spacer block. And the spacer block is supported by that panel molding. And then I'll take that 5 8 nail, slide the spacer block, put pressure on it, 5 8 nail. Same thing all the way down the line. This ensures a proper reveal this whole way. And you can see that mitered return and that is really clean looking there. And don't worry, <laughs> these are 5 8 nails. I'm not shooting into this floor. And there's no, there's no risk of that at all. So now all I gotta do is just lift this up. Oh crap, it was the 2 inch nails. Just kidding. <laughs> now all we gotta do is lift this up and we are good to go. All right. You can see the reveals and how everything kind of works. And I'll take this back down and go over the construction of it with you one more time. But I got my reveals um, right here. If you look, this is where I marked with that Craig, that 13 16 reveal right there. That will get cocked in. All this stuff will get filled. Everything will get filled. But nonetheless, everything's tight as it is. And um, that glue, I'll just wipe that out right now before that dries. But then this, you can see how flush it is against the wall. And that's why I like doing it like this in one piece. Because once you build the unit, you can wrap it with the trim and then there's none of this little tape measure stuff and trying to measure off the wall. It just fits really good. So again, there'll be no glue or adhesive on the wall for this. We're just gonna use the 15 gauge nails and those should hold it nice and tight. Okay, so I'll go over the construction of this one more time real quick, just an overview before we install it. So we took a one by four and this is the finger joint pine one by four. I marked two inches from the top of it and did a chamfer. On the bottom, I did the same thing, but just four inches and the chamfer stops at four inches. Then we, uh, we'll turn this a little bit. We pocket hold this header or this uh, casing leg into the header of the trim. And this header has a mitered return to give it the look of a solid piece of wood here. We pocket hold that together and then wrapped it with panel molding and a crown using those techniques that I showed you with the 5 8 nail and glue. So one thing I'm checking with the installation of this is reveals. So as long as I have reveals, they're good. I'm going to be able to just fly through this. So reveals good over here. Make sure 
they're good on both sides. If you have any unevenness at this point, um, you shouldn't, but if you do, you just split the difference evenly. But this is looking like it's right on all of my pin lines. So I'm gonna go right into that stud here. And then as I go, if I need to adjust the board a little bit, I can kind of tweak it as I nail it. And then I'm not really angling these nails because I know for sure there's a stud right there framing out this, this opening. So I'm just shooting straight into that stud. So that's gonna do it for the installation of this. This is not something that's hard to do so if you're going to think about tackling something like this for your first trim project it's not hard to do you just got to take your time and make sure you take accurate measurements and stuff like that and i really like this look it's a real classic look it's not too over the top it would fit with a lot of houses at least here in texas where we are it's not just you know heavy heavy trim work but it does add that little flair and gives it a more luxurious feel for your house so that's gonna do it for this video. Hopefully you learned something and thanks for coming along with us on this job site video and we'll see y'all on the next video. Take care.